A British man, Paul Yuri, has died while being detained by Russian-backed separatists in eastern Ukraine. A British man who was captured by Russian-backed separatists in Ukraine has died in detention. 45-year-old Paul Yuri from Warrington was held in the self-proclaimed People's Republic of Donetsk in April and accused of being a mercenary. His mother is said to be distraught and still in shock after being told of his death by the Foreign Office. Our correspondent James Landale reports. Paul Yuri was a volunteer a humanitarian worker from Warrington who came to Ukraine to try to help. But it was a journey that ended in his death. The 45-year-old Briton was detained in April near here, the city of Zaporizhia. He was trying to rescue a family from a village nearby, but was held at a checkpoint as he tried to enter Russian-controlled territory. I begged him not to go, and he said, I'm stopping him doing what he wants to do. His mother, Linda, worried about his poor health and wanted to know why he hadn't been released as part of a prisoner exchange. You would think Paul would be, well, there yeah, you go, he's no good to us. He's half dead. And let him go and let him get there. But they didn't, they let him die there. And I want to know why they let him die. Why did they let him die? Mr Yuri was held by pro-Russian forces in the self-declared Republic of Donetsk and accused of being a mercenary but he had type 1 diabetes and other chronic conditions, and his captors said this led to his death. A spokeswoman, Daria Morozova, said, on our part, despite the severity of the alleged crime, Paul Yuri was provided with appropriate medical care. Nevertheless, given the diagnoses and stress, he died on the 10th of July. So it's a very... Uh, but one humanitarian group that had been seeking Mr Yuri's release told me he had clearly not been treated properly. He wasn't being looked after as, um, as he said he was being looked after. Um, um, and we know that he wasn't getting the medication that he needed. The Foreign Office has long condemned the exploitation of British civilians and prisoners of war being held by pro-Russian forces in Ukraine. But the Kremlin sees them as diplomatic pawns who can be used to put pressure on the West. And officials here don't expect that strategy to change soon. The Foreign Secretary Liz Truss said Russia should bear full responsibility for the death of Mr Yuri, who, she insisted, had been carrying out humanitarian work. She summoned Russia's ambassador in London to the Foreign Office, where officials told him and his staff of the government's deep concerns. James Landell, BBC News. First, Britain accused Russia today of continuing to commit atrocities in Ukraine as it emerged. One of the latest civilian victims is a four-year-old girl. Lisa Dimitreva was killed in a Russian missile strike in a city 200 miles from the front line. Her mother lost a leg in the attack. Well, Ukraine's army can do little to stop such long-range attacks, but it is silencing Russian guns near the front line. It's being helped by state-of-the-art artillery supplied by NATO. The weapons are striking fear into the invading Russians, operated by brave Ukrainian crews who must hide soon after opening fire. Our senior international correspondent John Irvine filmed with one artillery unit near the front line near Kharkiv. From there, he sent this special report. Speed is the key. The faster they can drive, deploy and deliver their shells, the greater their chances of success and survival. The Russians hate these Ukrainian gun crews in particular because the new howitzer they're handling is the best of its kind in the world. The British-designed M777 is lighter, more precise, and can fire further than anything the Ukrainians had before the Americans began supplying them back in May. When it comes to artillery, the Russians have a 10 to 1 advantage, but the Ukrainians believe that with its accuracy and range, this weapon can offset their numerical deficit. It's a quality versus quantity thing. They were engaging in what's called counter-battery fire, targeting Russian artillery positions. The problem with counter-battery fire is that the Russians do it as well. Those two bangs were their guns replying. Yeah. Do you want to get a bit done this 
Bit what? That way, yes. The priority for the gun crews was to get their precious howitzers to safety. We had to leg it. As luck would have it, those Russian shells are landing about 600 meters away. They're in a line. There's another one. Big one, big one, big one. They never traversed towards us, and we all got away unscathed. In the Donbass, where most of this war is being fought, hide and seek and destroy is the name of the game. These Ukrainian soldiers handle one of the most fearsome weapons in their country's arsenal, the Uragan multiple launch rocket system. They've been flat out since the war began. What is the most satisfying target to hit? The most satisfying target is the one that is confirmed destroyed, and of course enemy artillery. If we silence their guns, it means our infantry units have a few days when they are much safer. Each lorry carries 16 rockets. The unit has four lorries, their operational day and night. Since the war began, in the depths of winter, they fired almost 7,000 rockets. While the Ukrainians can compete on the battlefield, there's one Russian weapon they're struggling to combat. The long-range ballistic missile, three of which were fired at the city of Venezia yesterday. This CCTV shows the spreading shadow of the plume of the explosions. Today the death toll stood at 23, but it's expected to rise. One of the children killed was four-year-old Lisa, pictured pushing her pram earlier in the day. This is the pram among the wreckage. Russia has become a serial killer of civilians, men, women and children. John Irvine, ITV News, Eastern Ukraine.